Good evening, good morning, and namaste from India. I am Rashmi Agarwal, founder and core group member of Evaluation Community of India. I am also APIA board member and co-chair of IRI. My thanks to organizers for giving me this excellent opportunity. It is my pleasure to welcome all the participants, speakers, and presenters in today's webinar. So this is the first webinar in the series on the topic relating to competencies of evaluators. This series is being organized by APIA, IRIPE, and Decade of Evaluation for Action in collaboration with FLEVA, ECOIRE, ESK, FieldF, Western Balkans Evaluation Network, and Monitoring and Evaluation Network of Kyrgyz Republic. The session will commence uh, for about 30 minutes. We will then open the floor for question answer session for about 15 minutes. All participants are requested to keep their microphones and videos off. And for questions and comments, please use chat box. As you know, professionalization of monitoring and evaluation is a priority in order to strengthen the larger m and ecosystem. In this context, this series on competency is extremely relevant and important for all of us in generating evidence through evaluations professionalization of evaluation is a prerequisite and competencies of evaluators is one of the important components in professionalization. We have an excellent presenter today. He is Ruchira Parana Vithana from Sri Lanka. Before I invite Ruchira, I would like to invite Asela Kalugam Sitiya for giving opening remarks on behalf of APIA. Asela is president of both SLEVA and APIA and a core group member of IRIP. Actually, he is a force behind launching of IRI. Asela, over to you, please. Thank you, Rashmi. Uh, I'm really you know, happy to uh, give opening remarks of this uh, webinar. Actually, this is organized by Asia Pacific Evaluation Association and uh, Interregional Initiative for Professionalization of Evaluation, in short, uh, IRIP. Uh, actually, now this is the first webinar of a series of webinars. There are eight webinars. Uh, and uh, this is based on the competency framework we developed uh, in the region uh, led by HFSP Evaluation Association. Uh, actually, why we developed this professionalization of evaluation is very important. And we want to build the capacity of evaluators uh, by promoting competencies. And we have identified competencies. Uh, there are, you know, six uh, main competency areas, and uh, you know, uh, uh, subcomponents of that as well. And this is to raise awareness uh, among evaluators in the region about, you know, competencies for evaluators. So we hope that you will uh, actively participate in these webinars, and then uh, uh, help it help you to. Uh, uh, understand about competencies and what are the competencies you already have and what are the competencies you need to improve. Uh, so it will be a dialogue uh, with uh, uh, with our resource person, uh, with our champion, Ruchira Parnavitana, who developed these competencies for the region uh, with a lot of efforts uh, and hard work. We appreciate, Ruchira, your uh, contribution to this. And also we appreciate uh, all the uh, stakeholders join these efforts because this is part of the uh, Asia Pacific Regional Evaluation Strategy uh, we developed to uh, build the evaluation culture in the region and provision like the eight pillars of this strategy. And this is a joint effort with many stakeholders and we hope to strengthen the professionalization uh, aspect uh, with all these you know, uh, efforts with the different stakeholders. So uh, I'm really happy to have this you know, first webinar, and this is the introductory webinar. Then uh, Ruchira will have you know, a webinar for each competency, uh, up to six competencies, and then we will have a uh, last concluding webinar. So that's why uh, we have you know, eight webinars in this. So every month, one webinar. Uh, so we are starting this webinar series today. Uh, let me uh, also appreciate again uh, Ruchira Parnavithana's you know, expertise and support and also all the other uh, uh, people who uh, contributed to this and the organization uh, organizations. And also uh, let me thank uh, 
uh, Rashmi, Dr. Rashmi Akrawal and Alok uh, Srivasta from uh, uh, the IRIP uh, and all the others who uh, made this possible the webinar series. Thank you very much and uh, floor is back to you Rashmi. Uh, thank you very much, Sel, for your inspiring opening remarks and detailing the context of the webinar series and also telling us about the details of the eight uh, webinars which will come up in, in a series of the month. Now I invite Alok Shirvastra to give opening remarks on behalf of iRife. He is a convener of iRife and a founder and core group member of Evaluation Committee of India. Alok, over to you, please. Thank you, Rashmi. It's an honor for me to do the opening remarks on behalf of IRIPE, the Interregional Initiative for Professionalization of Evaluation. IRIPE is a very unique initiative in terms of that it's a joint initiative of six VOPAs, Voluntary Organization for Professionalization of Evaluation, spread across nine, representing nine countries. And as we grow, I would like to give you a brief idea about IRIP that it was established in 2020 and we have done a marvelous job where we come together, share our thoughts and develop during this period when the COVID-19 pandemic made us to interact virtually and we have developed some three nice products, knowledge products in terms of multi-country status reports of all the member countries on monitoring and evaluation situation in the country. Also, we have developed a definition of professionalization of evaluation. Along with that, another knowledge product that we have developed under IRIPE is ethical standards for evaluators and program managers. And of course, the competency framework on which you will have the detailed webinar series from Ruchira. So I hope that by the time we come to the end of this webinar series, there will be more members joining us in the iRIPE team family. And I wish all the best to Ruchira for today's webinar and forthcoming. And that's all from my side, Rashmi. Over to you. Thank you, Alo, for highlighting the initiative of iRIPE and the work done so far. Uh, now it's time to invite our speaker of the day. Let us welcome Rushira Parana Vithana from Sri Lanka. He is a science graduate and is a quality and HR systems specialist. He has more than 25 years of work experience in manufacturing private sector and community work and evaluation in development sector. Currently, he is working as senior quality assurance manager <clears throat> and managing quality systems and processes and leading quality strategy and roadmaps. He has earlier worked as senior lecturer and Chartered Institute of Personal Management in Sri Lanka and a lead quality management systems auditor. I would like to tell you specifically that he is a certified master trainer who actively contributed to build competency models. He is also a theme leader of professionalization of evaluation in Asia Pacific Regional Evaluation Strategy Formulation and also a member of IRI. He has also co authored competency framework for evaluators competency assessment pathway and many other career resources for YAEs. I again welcome you, Ruchira, and the floor is yours now. Ruchira, over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rashmi, for the generous uh, uh, introduction. And uh, hello and a warm welcome to all of you who are joining uh, this webinar today. And uh, uh, we are very happy to see that you all are connected to learn about competencies uh, for evaluators. And uh, I would uh, rather like to uh, call myself as, as, uh, as one of the references coming from the private sector and want to add value to the uh, development sector. Uh, that is also a need uh, that has been identified uh, in the development sector. So joining hand uh, these uh, two sectors uh, will definitely add value and there are a lot of factors that are complementing each other. So uh, very happy with that. And uh, I have uh, 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 
uh, co-authored uh, this competency framework and uh, my expertise basically mainly on the HR and competence side of course quality and I was uh, really blessed to have uh, the, the subject matter experts uh, from the evaluation field uh, to make this uh, product. So the, this is the first uh, of the eight uh, webinars, eight uh, webinars. And the first one, the topic is on professionalization of evaluation and the need to build and enhance competencies for evaluators. So this webinar, we are mainly targeting uh, the evaluators at our, as our target audience. But uh, the WOPE representatives and uh, I, other stakeholders all can also get uh, benefit uh, out of this. Uh... Ruchira, you have got muted. Please unmute yourself. Sorry. So mainly our target audience is the evaluators, but uh, for any other WOPE representatives or stakeholders can benefit, get benefit from this presentation. And if somebody wants uh, to implement a competency framework in their respective countries, uh, they can join hand with a uh, PR, no issue. And uh, I would love to start with a lovely quote from uh, one of the management gurus from our time. Uh, trust has two dimensions, competency, competence and integrity. We know that uh, 2020 was a was a jarring wake up call, ladies and gentlemen. And there are a lot of disruptions revealed and also opportunities emerge. We learn that uh, mobility is limited and motion is boundless. And we also learn uh, sustainability is the new prosperity and innovation will save our plants, a lot of learning. And on top of everything, we learn the importance of rising uh, trust in individuals, in organization, in the communities and governments, uh, countries, unions, everywhere. So uh, we all over the world, we learn the importance of trust. So when it comes to professional trust, it has two dimensions. One is competence and the other one is integrity, the main dimension. So one of the uh, one of the two dimensions, competence, is the topic for today. Next. So the agenda, uh, introduction to webinar series, I will not dwell uh, much on that. And then uh, we will have two uh, subtopics for today. One is the professionalization of evaluation, and the other one is competencies for evaluators. So, as uh, they have been uh, um, mentioning about uh, about these uh, two uh, uh, organizations, uh, we are joining hands for professionalizing evaluation. So, APIA, as the uh, regional WOP, uh, develop a regional evaluation strategy, uh, one of the milestones and landmarks uh, in, in the evaluation, monitoring and evaluation a history uh, as a Salem Nation uh, regional evaluation strategy. And uh, evaluation is one of the key themes. And uh, uh, we further, APIA further join hand with, with partners to offer products on competencies and also uh, career development resources for YAEs. And as Alok mentioned, the IRIPE within a shorter period of time has, uh, has done uh, an excellent job in producing uh, the, the definition of professionalization. It's not a, not a, I mean, kind of an easy, uh, easy go. There'd be a lot of work on that and ethical standards for evaluation practice and also country profiles. Next slide. So overall learning outcomes, this is uh, for the entire series of webinar. Understand the need for professionalization of evaluation with the due recognition for competency as a strategic pillar of pillar, pillars of success. And then 
uh, we all should uh, understand why competencies are important for evaluators and then we'll move on to the uh, we'll you will also learn the base uh, base framework, the competency framework, and product and process features, and various uses of it. And then uh, finally, uh, the the most important thing is uh, understand what the learners need to do. That you all need to do. We all need to do so because competency is for everybody. Identify competency gaps and bridge them and continuously sharpening, con sh sharpening and enhancing them with the simple development plans. Next. So as, uh, as we mentioned, this is, an, this is a webinar series of eight webinars. Each month we'll have a webinar and uh, we'll have the, this is the intro, introductory webinar. And we'll have, we will dedicate one webinar for one competency domains. We have all together six competency domains. And then we'll have the finally the wrap up uh, and webinar to close, close the loop on all the questions and also the, the, the different ideas, the storyboard that we all will create together. Next slide, please. Okay, the first subtopic for today, professionalization of evaluation and the importance of competency as a pillar of strength. Next. So if you look at the professionalization, uh, it has been a dominant theme among evaluation professionals for past, uh, past decades. And uh, evaluation is still a young and fledging profession and all all are in in, uh, in uh, one uh, one mindset, one objective that we should professionalize evaluation, and we have a lot of ben many many benchmarks uh, we can find around doctors, accountants, lawyers, engineers. So they have a very clear pathway pro for professionalization, but uh, we don't see a similar pathway for evaluation professions. And there are academic courses, professional qualification and competencies for those uh, 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 professions, but those are not defined and agreed for evaluation profession. Next slide. Okay, so expectation, expectation in the sense, in, the, in, the, uh, in terms of human resources. So, what do what do the stakeholders, the entire entire world expects uh, from the evaluator when it comes when it when we consider him as a human resource? We need able evaluators. Is that enough? No. We need capable evaluators, and is that enough? Not at all. We need competent evaluators who have the necessary skills, uh, uh, dispositions, and knowledge, and all. In, in a mix uh, will make them competent evaluators. And that is, that is good, but we also need further to get for them to get qualified as evaluators from a recognized regulatory body. And then with that, with that milestone, if we achieve uh, that milestone, they will definitely produce credible, reliable and useful evaluation the need of the hour. And uh, with the pandemic, we have uh, we have learned that utility is now has uh, has come to the top of the list. And uh, with that quality evaluations, uh, uh, they will produce results uh, that will help stakeholders to make solid decisions, foundation, more knowledge, and then that will improve policies, organization, and programs, and that will also improve in turn quality of life. So that is, that is our journey in improving the human resource uh, evaluators as human resource. Next slide. So let's look at the proposed definition for professionalization of evaluation. This is the IRIPACE, uh, the IRIPE own definition. That is something that we have, uh, we have uh, 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 produced. It's a process, it's a system or a state of becoming, being or becoming a professional practitioner. You can see some of the catchwords here. 
and we talk about knowledge we talk about dispositions or attitudes and we talk about skills and we talk about also talk about education training and experience all are valuable and we talk about as i mentioned earlier recognition and regulated by an integrated professional body and they should have 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 the autonomy to to work in the practice but they also have strict code of ethics and they have the purpose overarching purpose you are seeing the common good and progress of the society make the evaluation the utmost form of public service altruistic value uh, to to the people to the organizations to all the stakeholders so that is uh, the definition for professionalization next slide so let's look at uh, and that in line with the definition that uh, i have uh, sh uh, mentioned show explain uh, let's look at your un united nations strategic pillars and they have Uh, declared this in their concept paper in 2016 and it has six strategic pillars access to education and training edu academic programs training and mentoring programs and professional development avenues and dissemination of knowledge and good practice we have conferences research and lesson learn and uh, knowledge sharing and we have and guide guiding principles ethics and standards ethics standards principles and the talk of the uh, to topic of today evaluation capabilities and competencies a competency framework and recognition of knowledge skills and experience and uh, uh, the credentialing the initial state as the the canadian evaluation society has has already gone uh, achieved that milestone they have a credentialing program and accreditation station is by a by a regulated body and then the most strictest one is the licensure and then institutional structures we have associations we have organization structures forums so all this is a snapshot of what we should have we should have programs we should have training research we should have standards we should have framework and regulation as uh, the, the governance or the compliance controls and association of all all should go in tandem in together to make an impact in uh, to make uh, the professionalization moving forward next so that was a dialogue about, about uh, professionalization or evaluation i hope uh, just quick wrap up wrap up you have understood the need for professionalization and the dialogue that is happening going going around and what is inside in the professionalization evaluation what what is needed and then one of the strategic pillars is competency and then let's move on to the competency framework of evaluators propose propose for asia pacific region as as i mentioned next slide okay i i will not spend lot of time as asela mentioned this is uh, part of the asia pacific regional evaluation strategy what you are seeing uh, on the screen is overall theory of change we have eight themes and we have one of the themes is professionalization and evaluation it all started in june 2020 with regional consultation and usually consultations stop after after the gathering and seldom that will move to to the actionable status with uh, not a lot of examples uh, we can find around so but it went further we constructed uh, the theory of change and there are a lot of team work have been done offline and strategy worked out stakeholder conduct consultation with all these uh, these the, the theory of state change and also the action components we went to a stakeholder consultation and then finally implementation started so one of the themes professionalization and evaluation and define and develop competency framework is one of the action action components next so just uh, just to share explain you some of the definitions and concepts 
A competency is the ability to be able to perform a task to the expected standards. So standards are important. Here we are talking about the standards, competency standards for evaluators and using appropriate mix of knowledge, skills and disposition. And uh, in the HR world, we talk about profiling and mapping of competencies. Usually the companies do that. They do uh, with job descriptions and it, job description explain in case D or knowledge skills and this position and competency domains uh, uh, the six domains that we are going to talk about so those are actually clusters of competencies that are interrelated so clusters of interrelated competencies and competency modeling is also a collection of competencies and with models we go on to domains and competency framework is a broader framework of divergent areas of competencies that integrates, organizes, and arranges different competencies that will form and prescribe a general descriptive framework for a profession. So that is uh, what we have, we came up with. And indicative behaviors, the expected indicative behaviors that are specified or implied generally or obligatory to demonstrate the competency at the expected level. So generally, there are some traditions, commonly accepted uh, behaviors of professions, uh, practices of profession, and there are also uh, specified or prescribed or defined. So all so all of them uh, will actually form the indicative behaviors. Next slide. So this is the model for professional excellence, uh, like uh, the one you saw before uh, the UN model. We also have came up with a model for APIA. And uh, so you can see here, the, we, are, we are talking about a many house of professional excellence. And if you start, uh, uh, if, you, if you think about uh, the journey of, uh, of an evaluator, starting from any YE, S and Y, so YE, and uh, what he can do is he can actually, he, he can follow a model for personal success. And there are a lot of learning, learning opportunities around. And we encourage 70, 20, 10%, 70%, 20 and 10% learning. We all know that 70% is on the job. Uh, we gather a lot, uh, the bulk of the big chunk of the learning by by doing our, our job or in, in a different context. And 20% informal learning that you gather from the different, the association, working with associations, networks, and the webinars and all that. And 10% is formal training. You actually follow uh, concrete courses. They may be from academia, the universities conducted by universities or the others training solution providers. And then with the qualification, with the qualification criteria that we, we have discussed it in a different uh, product assessment pathway. And we go on to the competency framework. And then we have the assessment uh, process. It's not a scope out for today. We'll talk about competency, only about competency framework, and that will feed the competent evaluators uh, to, the, to the field. And the m and &E house, we have uh, the competency pillar, we have the governance, uh, ethical code of conduct, adherence to evaluation standards and practice principles. And we have capacity we are which, in which we are very strong at uh, the, the, the growth, the learn and share, uh, lesson learn programs, uh, and a lot of seminars, webinars. And we also talk about demand here as a strategic pillar because we want to increase demand for evaluation. So that will that will uh, disappear once we set up uh, once the demand is is uh, uh, established. And we'll, with all that, we will actually enhance the service and uh, enhance the development processes. Finally, we'll actually produce. We have the for the individual excellent performance and fulfillment. And we also improve collaborative performance, professional contribution, and it will be spotted as guardians, change agents, resilient leaders, community champions. Next slide. And so, so competency framework in a nutshell. So in when preparing this uh, competency framework, we have con considered uh, all major work in this field. We have considered the work of UN, UNEC, 
and then uh, the Canadian Evaluation Society, that is the most organized and uh, framed competency framework available at the moment. And also we consider the UK Evaluation Society's competency, they call it capabilities framework. And then we also have the European uh, Evaluation Network product. We also have the ideas uh, product. So, and we also have New Zealand uh, competencies uh, framework. They are very, very strong on the contextual uh, uh, competencies, cultural competencies. So we have considered them all and we did a literature review and then we came up with a model and then we we'll brushed uh, the model up and we followed the standard cardinal rules in writing the competencies and then we design and develop it further and we applied the six uh, point criteria valid to validation, the validation protocol to validate all the competencies, whether they are in line. And we also looked at the other profession, leading professions, and how their competency framework, that they have, they have gone, gone, uh, of, uh, gone far from us, and how they have uh, developed their competency frameworks. And uh, because, and that was used for a lot of transversal competencies. There are competencies that are very common to, common to uh, different professions, like professional practice and there can be the communication, the interpersonal stuff. So we uh, did a transversal uh, analysis and then we went on, we also used the Bloom's uh, taxonomy that is widely used in the field of uh, education and learning. And they have studied the psychological process behind learning. And uh, if you take, they have three domains, knowledge, uh, effective domain, uh, and also the, the, cog uh, the cognitive effective and the, uh, the other uh, relation uh, domain. So we, uh, that we use that to further refine the competency statement. So we have six competency domains, 43 competencies. And then uh, we came up with 208 indicative behaviors under those 43 competencies. And uh, we have professional practice as one domain. We have technical competencies. We have contextual analysis. We have program management. Uh, we have interpersonal competence. And then we also have personal and professional development. We have uh, uh, included it is as a competency domain. So what all, all will be aiming at uh, uh, producing a competent evaluator. Next slide. Okay, so let's uh, start with uh, the domains. I will give give an introduction to uh, introduction to the six competency domains. Okay, so uh, let's start with professional practice, and that is uh, essential competencies to demonstrate the highest level of professionalism in the field of evaluation. And under that, we have these are not uh, competency statements. Don't get uh, mislead. Uh, uh, misled. These these are actually competency areas, competency topics, uh, professional integrity, and updated knowledge, uh, integrity, honesty, diligence, accountability, and high highest level of showing the highest level of competency. And then we talk about updated knowledge and base knowledge, the grounded theories, and also emerging trends in monitoring and evaluation. And we talk about quality of service and natural systems, and health and well-being of the people, ecological harmony, and also the respect to the natural systems in the evaluation practice. And we talk about transparency and confidentiality. I don't think that I need to explain the sound, reasonable judgment, the non-biasness, and we talk about in the, uh, 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 truthfulness, accurate uh, data protection, and we talk about uh, reason, uh, sound reason by judgment and non-bias, and respect the differences uh, of the stakeholders, and we value differences, and we use uh, differences as a, as a capacity builder, and then uh, the, uh, the contribution to the knowledge base, that is creation, a dissemination, application, and translation of learning as a professional practice. And then 
Uh, we also talk about good documentation practices. We call it GDP. That is how do you manage your documents, your version control, uh, how do you avoid uh, loss of integrity, avoid improper use. And then uh, we also talk about uh, commitment to sustainable development. So, uh, so, so how you can, how you can uh, respect the pillars of sustainable development in the evaluation practice. Next slide. So I will. Uh, uh, this is this is the 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 extract from from our product uh, document, uh, the competency framework. So you see the exact competency competency statements here. So under professional practice, we have nine competencies and we have thirty two indicative behaviors. For example, acts with utmost professional integrity, demonstrates knowledge on established evaluation theories, models, methods, tools, and stays informed about new and new, evolving, emerging thinking and best practices, and delivers quality of service, value, common good, and natural system in the evaluation practice, demonstrates transparency and confidentiality. So likewise, we have uh, very clear, as I mentioned, how, how I have explained how we develop these competency statements. So we have we have clear competency statements, and under that we have indicative behaviors. So this is an example and extract. I will not include everything from for the all the domains today, because we will have a dedicated. Uh, dedicated uh, 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 webinar uh, session, dedicated sessions uh, each for a competency domain. So next slide. So this is the extract of uh, one of the competency domains. You have the competency domain definition, a detailed definition, and you have the competencies, as I mentioned, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the key competencies, and you have indicative behaviors. You have when when if, it, if I talk about acts with utmost professional integrity, then performance evaluation tasks with honesty, diligence, and accountability, maintenance, unbiasedness, and impartiality in all interactions, complies with any policies likewise. So next slide. So that, that was about the professional practice. And then the technical competence and essential competencies to demonstrate highest level of technical know-how, sorry, uh, know how needed for successful performance in the field of evaluation. And uh, here we talk about these are this is the technical stuff. We talk about the background, purpose, and goal goal of the evaluation. And then we talk about the program uh, uh, evalu evaluability, program evaluability, activity, uh, range of activities, what are the parameters, the scope and what, how you can increase the prospects of evaluation. And then we talk about the program theory. We have we carefully construct the program theory, uh, built EOC and the, the thoughts and interaction and uh, retro, uh, considering a prospective learning also. And then we go out to topics and uh, uh, questions and issues uh, framework. Uh, issue framework and also we talk about we all know that we we will have to come up with key evaluation questions it can be related to the process or it can be related to the outcome we we'll, should have the five to seven the the high level uh, evaluative questions and then we'll move on to evaluation design and then the agreement with the stakeholders and then we'll move to the methodology uh, what's the methodology? What the use of qualitative method and also quantitative methods and uh, use of mixed method? Where to use uh, these methods? And then we talk about data collection tools and mechanisms, and data analysis, the data requirements, methods, quality concerns, and then data analysis, use of tools for data types, uh, software applications, and finally uh, findings. Uh, we should, we all should. Uh, we all know that uh, it should be realistic and actionable recommendations and then establishing links between the findings, conclusions and recommendations to make them more uh, useful, useful study. And then finally reporting the structured balance, potentially useful and uh, plausible, reasonable action, uh, triggering actions, the reporting. Next slide. 
So contextual and in the contextual analysis, we talk about essential competencies to demonstrate the highest level of contextual awareness and proactive responsiveness in the field of evaluation. And uh, the, the contextual mastery is very important. How do you identify context? What are the issues that are there? The policies and political considerations and then stakeholder management is very important. Uh, it can be the stakeholders in, involved in program operations, the sponsors, collaborators, uh, coordination, uh, the coalition partners, funding, administration, managers, staff, and also uh, there are also affected or impacted the, the members, families, advocacy group, community, community uh, residents. So there are stakeholder stakeholders involved and how you manage the stakeholders, needs, expectation, rights, their capacities, and the risk and risks and opportunities, what can go wrong and what can be explored. And respect and value, stakeholder engagement, a mutual trust, uh, empathetic uh, appreciation to enhance contribution, and then uh, change management in the context, very important impact uh, you should have to recognize the change and the impact and you could, you need to respond to them and uh, facilitate evaluation use and influence in the in the the contextual practices how do you remove barriers identify opportunities for influence and utilize your utilization plan processes forums and then uh, practice based learning and improvement uh, Different learning has for evaluators and experience learning and optimized sharing. Next slide. Program management we'll talk about because anyway evaluators have to manage projects. So there is a there is a supervision stuff. There is uh, the project management stuff. So we thought of including it uh, as a program management. See the potential of building further. So leading and managing. Uh, the milestones, the purpose, motivation, and scope management is important. Strategic planning, operational planning, uh, job parameters, operational controls, and resource management is important. Time, budget, staffing, work with service providers, logistics, and relationship management is important. Task delegation, facilitate to decision makings, working with the experts, and meeting management is important. And progress report and re review and reporting to stake. Uh, progress reporting to stakeholders, a scope uh, change communication, and continuous improvements is today's context problem solving and improvement. Uh, improvement is very important. And flexibility and alertness is particularly on the program management, how you handle with uh, multiple projects, how you work uh, on, uh, according to the pace. Next slide. We talk about interpersonal competence, essential interpersonal competencies to demonstrate the ability to create synergies and capacities for interdependence and colla collaborative contribution. So this is most mostly on the HR uh, side the stuff, the soft skills, uh, which are very important. And the st communication, uh, the strategy, uh, the maybe needs, language preferences, hierarchy, policy, and removing barriers and communication skills for it. The, the format, diction, grammar style, dignity, respect, uh, data visualization, and oral and oral, the listening skills, and also the, the uh, how your questions, verbal, body language. So social skills, interaction management, reading the most, persuasion, and feedback skills, how you give and receive feedback and achieve cons consensus. Negotiation skills and conflict management, uh, how do you achieve peer buying and collaborative and partnership synergy? Next slide. So personal and professional development, most of uh, most of the uh, the competencies framework, this has been included in the uh, the uh, reflective practice or professional practice. But we thought that it is very important. Uh, competency domain. Though the competencies are few, we have three competencies, self-awareness and renewal, uh, understanding self, uh, interest, values, and then uh, how do you renew? And then career development is a very, very important skill. How you plan your career, how you develop your career, what are the strategies that you can approach, and the learning and growth, uh, competency building, learning habits, uh, practice habits, your networking habits, and 
uh, how you uh, co uh, engage in your, yourself in events. So that that stuff, the essential competency needs to sustain lifelong personal and professional development are included. So that concludes uh, concludes the discussion on the competency domains. The next slide. Okay, so that uh, ends uh, uh, webinar. This uh, webinar, the presentation, uh, but learning journey continues, and we'll start exploring competencies in detail uh, from the webinar two onwards. And uh, we want you to stay tuned and join with us, understand competencies, and do a fit gap analysis on your own and build and enhance competencies. So, grow personally, grow professionally, and make evaluations matter. So, thank you uh, so much for giving me time to make this presentation. And it's now uh, up to you, for you to discuss uh, the questions and answers. Thank you very much, Ruchira, for excellent presentation and giving us the perspective of professionalization, its needs and importance of competency. Uh, you also told us about the whole series of the webinars on this topic you are going to convene. Uh, I now open the floor for question and answer session. Please write your questions in the chat box. We have about 10 minutes for this session. And uh, so I'm just going through some of the questions we have in the chat box. I will take first question from Dhruba uh, Podial. He says that, do you see any necessity to examine competencies of evaluators through our own regional harmonization and accreditation entity? Ruchira, please. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Rashmi, now, uh, now tell me the question again. Uh, he is asking whether it is necessary to examine competencies of evaluators through yes. our own regional harmonization and accreditation entity. Uh, yes. Yes, I think, uh, I think uh, the that question is, uh, that is a futuristic question. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know as we discuss uh, just uh, defining and deploying competencies is not enough so there is a need for uh, the the examination uh, I, I would i would say the assess the competencies and yes uh, that can be uh, that can be a re that can be a country op as uh, as the uh, the uh, the the governing body governance mechanism or they can be the regional uh, regional association so yes there is a need to examine the competencies and that the the assessment how we are moving uh, we are moving with the assessment it's a, it's a bit uh, uh, the sensitive area as well so we have to decide later yes so it, it is good that if we have a if we have a regional or a global uh, association or governing body to examine competencies of evaluation and that will actually definitely improve the value of uh, the evaluators. Thank you, Richara. And I also feel that accreditation, etc. will take some time. It is difficult, but not impossible. And uh, relating to this accreditation, I think there is an answer and also a question from Mulobi. He says that when we talk about professionalization of evaluation, we need to bring the governments on board. How do we encourage them to join the conversation, especially uh, when uh, they are the key people in the policy making? And similarly, I mean, I will also add in this question whether what challenges you are facing in implementing this uh, competency framework. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would say it's a is a million dollar question <laughs> there will be a lot of challenges and in fact uh, we are i'm very happy to say that we have all already started uh, uh, started the initial discussions uh, for implementing it in sri lanka under the leadership of uh, a sailor uh, with the with the uh, this the uh, leadership of sleva as a country Ope. And uh, we are we are seeing uh, we are seeing the the hot topics we are uh, hot topics and uh, it'll depend on a lot of factors, uh, Dr. Rashmi, because uh, and uh, the particularly the 
the the country situation is 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 uh, is very important and some of the countries that uh, like canada they have gone to their human resource structures are very very strong and uh, stringent and they have a lot of uh, acceptance uh, in the the government coming from the government sector as uh, mark also mentioned that on at, at policy level on the competencies for professions so those uh, those kind of we have to actually now currently uh, now we are actually assessing the pushing and pulling forces there are a lot of lot of pushing forces but uh, that atmosphere is governing atmosphere is very important and there are some other factors the the dedication of the 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 country uh, institutions uh the all the stakeholders uh, the structures needed for it that we are we have discussed in the assessment pathway and lot of things to do we have to set up the assessment panels we need to train them we need to train to qualify them and uh, it, it will be a totally a novel experience uh, and uh, challenge and set new a lot of uh, new set of challenges uh, for implementing thank you ruchira for telling us the status of this implementation uh, of competency framework in your country and i fully agree that's a very very long way to go still so uh, similarly as you are saying that you are trying to engage the government people similar question from leonard he, uh, it, it is uh, like this that what is the role of parliamentarians especially in providing the laws to help enforcement of professionalization and evaluation and how to bring parliamentarians on board so do you have any linkages with parliamentarians uh, to implement or to have a law on um, professionalization of evaluation what is your experience in this yes uh, i think uh, we have the global uh, luckily we have the global parliamentarian forum so uh, that is actually is a blessing and if we if, we, if i again uh, take the example of sri lanka we have the uh, the uh, our parliamentary parliamentarian forum and sleva is is working together and uh, with that and in fact uh, i i must mention that uh, sri lanka is the only country that uh, that has come up with the uh, the nep national evaluation policy a lot of parliamentary contribution is involved and then uh, it's it's is with this because there should be some uh, some coalition some uh, um uh, the the team of parliamentarians working together with the country uh, country evaluation uh, organization and with that uh, synergy only we can actually uh, get it as a get noticed uh, the need of it uh, as a as a voice coming uh, voice for the policy makers and uh, from the from the the parliamentary parliamentarians but we don't have to i mean uh, what we can we can do today has to be done to has uh, should be done today so we can start uh, there is no hindrance in starting getting this framework and starting and using it and uh, when we go along uh, we will definitely will catch up a lot of interest uh, from the parliamentarians and we'll have to use uh, use the dialogue with them also uh, somehow to uh, to put into their voice in the in the parliament about the need for it and we also need to we do should not forget other government structures and the evaluation many setups they have so it's uh, it's very important and we all know we all always talk about this importance coming from the government direction uh, because when it is a direction coming from the government so everybody is 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 ready to comply but that doesn't mean that uh, we cannot we have to wait till that happen we can start uh, uh, from we can go uh, as, as the satisfactory in our journey to get that addiction thank you ruchira that's very true and as far as we understand that you have a parliamentarian forum and many parliamentarians from sri lanka are into it and i'm sure that uh, something good bit will turn up and uh, very soon we will see a law on professionalization in the country i will take another very interesting question from mulobi that uh, he is asking that many people are working and many institutions are working on this professionalization of evaluation and a lot of 
uh, talk is on this uh, topic. So mm -hmm. how to create synergy in all these institutions working on professionalization? Because everybody is bringing out its own product and many people are working on it. So how can we have some kind of synergy in it? Yes, uh, I, I would uh, I would like to answer a part of that question, and uh, uh, I, I I request Asil also to add uh, his viewpoints. Where Dr. Rashmi also can uh, can share uh, your views. And uh, I yes, that is uh, we have seen many many uh, products activities. Uh, uh, going on on professionalization evaluation and if you narrow it down further for about competencies so, so there are a lot of uh, lot of competencies i must say apart from the capacity that we have for capacity building we are doing a lot uh, in region wise and also globally and competency is the the next most travel path a uh, lot of alliances have come forward so uh, i think uh, now uh, uh, for example, we have the regional strategy, and this uh, maybe it's a, is a good chance for Apia also uh, to to bring it to the bring it to the global level and join hands with uh, with the other movements. I know that uh, 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 we have the 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 representatives here also also part of the other evaluations key evaluation strategies. We know the unique uh, the uh, UNEG group, they have a professionalization evaluation and IOC also has a, has a similar uh, initiative. So we should, uh, so we should talk to uh, creating the synergy uh, as um, uh, Mark mentioned, we should uh, start talking to each other and come to one forum and meet somewhere, uh, get into one table and then uh, put our heads down and, and uh, develop or a single roadmap for this professionalization. So there is no any other way that uh, that we can bring this synergy. Asela, maybe you can uh, you can add overall some comments uh, to these uh, questions. Asela, would you like to add something? Over to you. Uh, thank you, Rashmi, and uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Ruchira and also for this, you know, great uh, questions. Yes, as Ruchira mentioned, now uh, there are, you know, uh, competency frameworks developed in uh, at the, you know, global level, international level, and also United Nations Evaluation Group. But we see actually only in Canada the competency framework is used uh, to assess competencies of evaluators. So, so, so Canada has this credential evaluator program, and. Uh, we don't know whether, you know, as uh, asking the question, uh, whether we can have, you know, uh, laws to enforce the professionalism because it's an emerging uh, profession at the moment. Uh, of course, we need key elements for this, uh, whether it's a law or not. Uh, academic courses and uh, academic qualifications, as Ruchira mentioned, doctors, lawyers, engineers have a pathway for professionalization. So there is a degree program or some academic qualification and uh, necessary uh, uh, professional skills or uh, experience gaining before you become a, a professional in that you know, particular profession. But evaluation, there's no pathway for that. So we need to identify this pathway and, uh, and also now uh, based on these competencies and also see how to establish this. I know that in Sri Lanka, we have the uh, academic course, uh, postgraduate diploma in monitoring and evaluation, and we are starting the uh, master's course. But you know, uh, many countries in this region, uh, there are no uh, academic courses. So slowly, slowly, we have to promote this. And also to recognize what are the uh, uh, experience or other skills evaluators should have. So that's why we have uh, started this process. And uh, WAPES, the Evaluation Association, should take uh, the lead in that. Uh, at the same time, of course, you know, regulation is important, which I will mention this in uh, uh, upcoming webinars as well. Uh, but, you know, before that, I think we need to have these key components in place. This is what I would uh, say in short. Thank you. Thank you, Asela, for giving us the information on this interesting question.
I will now close the question and answer session and invite Mark Molobi for closing remarks. Molobi is a young and emerging evaluator. He is a co-chair of Evalute, co-leader of Eval Vijana. He is member of IRISE. Molobi, over to you. Thank you, Rashmi. Uh, thank you, thank you, everyone. I would like uh, to thank a peer led by Asela and uh, IRIPE for this good uh, opportunity. And uh, at IRIPE, we are, we are led by Alok, uh, Dr. Rashmi. We also have Vlatko here with us and the, the VOP is involved. Uh, so we would like to thank you for that, for actually coming up and developing the, the competency framework, uh, which is a very great space for learning. Uh, I've learned a lot today, and it's quite uh, engaging to see the energy today here. I would also like to thank our moderator, uh, Mr. Ruchra, who is actually a co-author in this uh, competency framework. Uh, in, in the competencies, and we've talked about the definition of the professionalization of evaluation, the importance of competency as a pillar of strength. We've talked about competency do domains, the interpersonal competencies, the program management, the contextual analysis, and the technical competencies. So thank you for that, uh, for very insightful uh, uh, talk today and discussion. I would also like to thank our technical team led by Maduka and Chama. So thank you so much. And to our dear participants uh, who've been very patient with us and uh, they have been quite engaged and engaging. So thank you. Back to you, Rashmi. Um, Thank you, Molovi, for summarizing today's webinar in your closing remarks. I hope you all enjoyed the discussions. Before I close, please join us for the next webinar in the series on uh, exploring competency domains. And the first competency will be professional practice. So it is on 5th May uh, at 6.30 p.m. IST and 9 a.m. EST. I would like to thank all the participants for a very lively webinar. And I also thank all the speakers and presenters. And thank you all once again. Thank you very much. <laughs>